Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Skyrim. Last time we left off we made our way here to High Hrothgar, the home of the Great Beards, and Elwyn studied and learned some new shout, uh, a new shout, and uh, improved his unrelenting fall shout. We talked with the Grey Beards, or one of them, one of them did all the talking, and uh, he told us about the way of the voice and how that we how we are uh, blessed with some kind of uh, ability to learn dragon shouts and other such things in a very quick manner. In seconds, we have learned what it would take these guys l years to learn. So we're kind of blessed, but it all comes naturally. It doesn't Ellen doesn't understand. It just it just kind of happens. So they uh, told us that before we can learn even more about our destiny, we need to go and retrieve the horn of the Jürgen Windcaller from Ustengrav, his tomb in Ustengrav, and then we bring it back here and no doubt we can learn some more things, some more about our our dragonborn abilities, about what it means, etc. But at the end of the last episode I did say that before I well, before I even contemplated taking Elwyn over that way, that we would. Do excuse me. Elwyn has obviously slept <laughs> since last time, although uh, <laughs> I forgot to do it. As we see this, the movement of the moon in real time. There we go. Okay, there we go. Morning, Lydia. Yes, sleeping on my feet today. <laughs> uh, what, what was I saying? Yes, before we contemplated going and doing that little task, uh, we were contemplating doing some other things. Maybe going around and uh, seeing some sights, visiting a few caves, a few tombs, a few barrows here and there. I've decided that Elwyn needs a home. He is currently laden with equipment to sell and therefore any further exploration from this point forward is pretty pointless unless we want to drop a load of things. So uh, we're going to head back to Whiterun where we are going to sell what we have in our bags and then we are going to uh, undertake a task. And that task is fairly simple. It is to gather enough coin to enable us to purchase Bree's home, the house in Whiterun. And only then, when we have achieved that, can we uh, press on to the College of Winterhold, which is the next place that Elvin wants to visit. So, I can't remember exactly how much it is, but we uh, have... How much do we have in our... Uh, coffers. We have 1,500. I think it's 3,000 or is it 4,000 gold plus an extra few thousand gold for the additions to decorate the house. So it's going to cost us a, a pretty penny or two. So there's going to be a lot of hard work but we have plenty of things to do. If we look at the map there are some places unexplored like White River Watch. We have need to explore that. Um, there is also Dustman's Cairn Halted Stream Camp is home to a bandit who we have a bounty to collect on. Um, so there are plenty of little hidey holes for us to explore and to possibly gain some coin. So that is what Elwyn is going to be focusing on in the near future. Gathering enough coin to purchase his very first house. And then we can put all these cumbersome books away that we need to put away. We can uh, put away all the food that we're carrying that we don't need and we can just lighten our bags allowing us to explore with plenty of room for loot. So I don't know how long that will take. We'll probably take upwards of about three or four hours so sit back and enjoy as we uh, take ourselves down 7,000 steps. <laughs> we came up them and we're now going back down. As Lydia struggles to keep up. So, it's there. Uh, although you haven't noticed anything too different in my uploading of Skyrim, it's been fairly regular. 
I actually, uh, when the game first came out, I played for however many hours, I think it's close to 20 hours, in a fairly short space of time. And then I sort of stopped playing. And as I speak to you today, having just come back from my holiday, the 23rd of January, I find myself playing Skyrim for the first time in uh, about a month. I haven't played Skyrim for about a month, which is actually a fairly long time, mainly because I've been doing other things like revision and uploading other games like Mass Effect and the other and <coughs> The Sims, starting The Sims. So uh, yeah, Skyrim took a back seat because I had plenty of Skyrim videos saved on my hard drive to upload. But now I've run out, and therefore I have to start playing again, which is not a bad thing, because I am looking forward to playing Skyrim for another 20 or so hours in the near future. So that is why I'm perhaps a little rusty <laughs> with my names of places and my uh, occasional mispress of a key or two, but that will soon come back to me. And I did notice I've just... Uh, edited and I'm starting to upload the previous set of updates when we came up the 7,000 steps I noticed that we missed a whole leap of herbs so I'm going to keep my eyes out for those as I make my way back towards Iverstead Thankfully we have killed all the wolves the frost troll that we encountered hopefully will not make a return we can just meander back down towards ground level in relative peace so last night in the uh, in High Hrothgar Elwyn could not find a bed and therefore had to sleep on a bench having sat round the oval table with the fire um, and just sort of contemplated what was said Took it all in, you know. It's all rather overwhelming at times. This, you know, this ability that he finds himself—I wouldn't say lumbered with. It's hardly a, a, a you know, it's, it's, it's a boon rather. He sees it, he sees it as a boon rather than a curse. But it's all, you know, it's just he needs to sit and and take it in, almost in a meditative-like state. But he was ready this morning to go. And last night, uh, after taking it all in and thinking about what was said. Uh, thinking about what he wanted to do in the near future and deciding that it was to uh, head back to White Room. He read a book, as is usually the case on an evening. He likes to finish his daily affairs with a, a read of a book whilst sipping uh, a, you know, a goblet of wine in the process as well. Uh, and he read the book of Rislav the Righteous, which was actually a, a longer book than he had hoped. <laughs> fair few pages but uh, it was rather an interesting uh, book to read and therefore he read it all and it was about well as you can imagine uh, a chap called Rislav no less Rislav Larik born in the uh, the first era of 448 he was born into royalty born his mother was uh, Queen Linada who unfortunately died shortly after his birth. <laughs> Look at that over there. A wolf in the uh, middle of the floor. And his father was King Morhus. And they were king and queen of, uh, of Skingrad. We all know Skingrad from uh, Oblivion. Ah, look at this. Breathe it in. I say breathe it in, it's probably rather thin air up here, so you'll probably be struggling to breathe, but breathe it in as best you can. The view is marvellous. Yes. So yes, the, 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 it was the royal family of Skingrad, uh, which is located in the Colovian Highlands in, uh, in Cyrodiil. But unfortunately for Rislav, he, he was the uh, youngest of a fair few siblings. Three sons and four daughters, no less, and therefore the first few years of his life were rather inauspicious. You know, the, he was undistinguished. An undistinguished existence as just another child of the, of the royal family. And one of the least important of the lot. Is this two paths? 
I'm lost. Lydia? What's going on here? Have I been this way? Is it a split path? Two paths to the same location? Maybe so. So yes, the first few years of uh, of Rizla's existence were rather, as I say, undistinguished. Another pawn in the grand picture of the royal family. There was a brief mention of him in a roll call at the coronation of one Emperor Gorius. And that happened in the year 461. Among the uh, guests, in addition to Rislav and his family, were several notable characters of that time. We have uh, the mention of the, the Beast of Anakina, one, bar, uh, one Darlock Bray. We also have mention of Kyorik the White, chieftain of Skyrim and his son Hogue. And also mention of an elf, some kind of elf leader, a Chima by the name of Inderil Nerevar and a Dreamer King as well. I thought these were mountain flowers, but they're not. Dumak Dwarf King and also a Mur in the service to the Imperial Rien Direni. Do excuse me there, just had to uh, relay some information. So that was the coronation of the Emperor Gorius. A few notable uh, characters there. And that was the first real mention of Rislav since, since he was born, really. Alright, we will relay the rest of that story in good time. But for now, we are going to head back and speak with Klimek. Bear with me a second. <laughs> Turn to Klimek. Uh, Klimek. Inform him that we have. Uh, where is he? He was in the inn last time, but I don't know if he'll be here again. Hello folks, how's it going? Don't mind me, I've just returned, I've just walked up and down 7,000 steps. You don't look steps. like a pilgrim. Why bother visiting Iverstead? Shut your face. Hmm. Klimek has done a disappearing act on us. And for some reason I don't have a map marker of his location. So we shall have to look high and low. It shouldn't be hard in a village that is this small. I say that, but it probably will be. Unless he's got his own personal accommodation here. Klimex House. Maybe it is too early. Too early for him to be out and about. What time is it? It's 11.48. And his house is locked, so he's inside. Curved swords. Yes, curve swords. Very good, very good. Right, I think we're gonna have to wait. Try now. Maybe Klimek is a late riser. Ah, here he is. No? Watch the skies, traveler. I used to be an adventurer like you. <laughs> and I took an arrow in the knee. Oh, rather unfortunate fate, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Oh, is this the barrow? Oh, it's only here. Yes, it is, Lydia, but we can't explore it because we don't have enough slots in our... You know, we don't have enough backpack space. We're already over-encumbered ourselves. We, we should save the loot and plunder for another time. Maybe when we return to the Greybeards for the second time, we shall uh, 
explore that barrel. But for now, I'm trying to find Klimek, because I don't want to lockpick his house and committed uh, committed a, a crime to get inside. Stupid man. Go to the bloody inn and have a drink or two. Come on, I don't have all night. Things to do. Or maybe now that I've taken up the job of delivering the supplies, he's got nothing to live for. Maybe he lies dead inside the house. Can I not knock? Is it not a doorbell? Ring a ding? Oh. Fine, I steal your salt instead. Damn you, Clement. Damn you to hell. This isn't going well. Oh, who's that? Oh, he's here! <laughs> I wish... Ah, good to see you again. How'd that delivery go? Yes, it's gone very well. I've delivered the supplies, like you asked. Quite a climb, wasn't it? Anyway, much appreciated. Here, take this for your troubles. Ooh, 500 gold! Thanks again for the legwork. No, thank you, my friend. 500 gold, that's... Uh, couldn't have come at a better time. And I got my... I got all confused. I... <laughs> if the door is the locked... Out fighting dragons and what do I do? It means they're out. When they're in, the door becomes unlocked. Yes, I... Silly me. Do excuse me. Right. Well, we've wasted how many hours of the day? Messing about there, trying to uh, find Klimek. But at least we managed to do it in the end. So, we now face the journey back to Whiterun, and before anybody asks that may be new to the series, no, I am aware uh, that you can fast travel, but I am choosing not to. We're going to enjoy the scenery, hopefully stumble across a wo one or two people. Maybe that Maik the Liar chap might pop up again and we can listen to his quips. Maybe we'll be attacked by a dragon. I don't know, maybe we'll come across some Thalmor. That's all part and parcel of the fun of walking. Not to mention this lovely musical score as we go on the way. So, back to my story about Rislav, if I... Just get my bearings again as we... There we go. So yes, as I say, he, he was... Uh, there was some mention of him at the coronation of the Emperor Gorius. What's that? Ah, it's only a fox. In the year 461. And then that's the last we hear of him. Until the year 472, when Skingrad and Kavach, who were previously warring states, came to a, a peace agreement. And to solidify that agreement, Rislav, in a political marriage, married the daughter of uh, King Justinus, uh, Justinius, rather, Belin. And their marriage secured the peace between Skingrad and Kovac. Okay, so who are these people down here? 